Welcome to the 121% Podcast. Today we are welcoming one of my most favorite people in the world. It is the legendary, the talented Jody Myers. Jody is an executive growth consultant with the Century 21 brand. I've known Jody for many years, even prior to uh, being a broker with Century 21. And then it just so happened that once we became a franchise, she was uh, our 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 go to gal, and gal extraordinaire she is. So, Thank Jody, you, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Kevin. It's You're good f- to be here. Hopefully, you'll come back for many more. We won't scare you off today. Are you trying to scare me off? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jody, you you have a very one thing I respect about you the most is your background. You have a very you know interesting story. You, you know, a lot of people in in my experience in the franchise world, they've never walked a mile in the shoes of the people that they're in charge of working with and helping grow their business. And in your case, you've walked more than just a mile in the shoes of an agent, in the shoes of an office leader. So tell us a little bit about your, your background and your journey to where you are today. Well, first of all, thank you for having me, Kevin. I, uh, absolutely thrilled to be here. Uh, you know, I have been in your shoes. I've been in new agents' shoes. I've been in a lot of shoes, and it's not, you know, a. It was not a, a smooth a smooth ride. Um, you know, first of all, I'm going to go back to 2003, and I tell this story. And there's a reason I tell this story is because so many people have told me over the years that, wow, I I totally relate to you. You know, I. I know that I can make it in this business because I'm where you are or I've been where you are. And, you know, it's so years and years ago, back in, I think it was 2001, I was a stay-at-home mom. I had three small kids. We were living in Atlanta, Georgia, beautiful home on a corner lot, two brand new cars, picket fence. I mean, we're talking ideal, ideal life. And then 9-11 happened. And everybody knows what happens to, you know, happened to the airline industry after that. Well, the airline industry basically just collapsed. My husband lost his job and I wasn't working. So what was I going to do? So we took a huge risk, a big, big risk. We did not have a lot of money saved up in the bank because we had three kids. We were young. We sold our house. Um, That's a whole nother story. But we sold our house and at the closing table, we had to pay it was like $900. That was the last $900 we had to our names. And we decided we were going to up and move to Florida. Why Florida? We have no idea, but it was a happy place. Disney was close by and we were just going to uproot our three kids and move to Orlando. Well, I'm glad you did. Yes. Well, me too, because I wouldn't be sitting here with you today. (laughs) Um, So, you know, I get to Florida and, you know, my husband had a small severance, but it was not enough to feed three kids and myself and pay rent and car payments and that sort of thing. And I looked at my husband, he looked at me and we're like, well, what am I going to do? What is he going to do? Well, I mean, why not get into real estate? Because the agent that just sold our house in Atlanta, did you see her paycheck? I was telling my husband, I'm like, did you see her commission check? And what did she do for that? I said, she didn't do anything. I said, she put a sign in the yard and that was it. Because real estate's easy, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyone can yes. sell real estate. Yes. So th- I, I <laughs> so that that was what I told myself. I'm going to get my real estate license because it's easy money. So. Liar. I, <laughs> exactly. Um, I will tell you, when I say I had no money, I had to borrow the money from my dad to get my real estate license. And that in itself was extraordinarily painful because my dad does not lend money to anyone. So I, I borrowed $2,500 for him, went to real estate school and, you know, went, went through school, joined the board. All of a sudden I'm here, this new agent, you know, with this, with this real estate license, you know, I'm going to, I'm just going to get out there and, and, and make it and make tons of money. It's like HGTV. You show three houses and you get a closing, right? Oh my gosh. That is, that's exactly what I, I mean, I thought, man, I'm going to be, you know, it's not six figures. I'm going to be seven figures because this is so easy. So anyway, <laughs> nobody tells you in real estate school that the first thing when you get your real estate license 
is finding a brokerage? Well, most schools may not. I know of one school in Orlando called One Blue that does. Oh, really? I've heard about that yeah. school. In fact, I saw that when I came yeah. in. I, how, <laughs> how ironic is that? Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, I, I did interview every every brokerage in Central Florida. You weren't around at the time because um, I probably would have gone to you. I was still in hotels. Oh, exactly. Um, I interviewed so many companies and so many brokerages, some of the bigger names. I... I decided I was going to go with an independent. This is no joke. They sat me down at a table, a round table like this, and, and, and said, you need to, you know, create a sphere of influence, and there, that's what you're going to do. Literally, I, I felt like I was, I had no direction, none. Like I was just out on this island by myself. No support, no nothing. So... About 24 hours later, I was like, okay, this isn't going to work, I, so I need, to know, I need to know what to do. I had no idea. It's amazing to me how so many real estate companies don't guide the new agents. I, I mean, it's, it, it was shocking to me. So I stumbled upon a Century 21 office in Celebration where I lived, and I will tell you, and this is where I'm going with this story, that was the best decision I ever made. I agree. It, well, it's one of the, at that point in your life, yes. It was the best decision I ever made. So here's why I'm telling this story is because, remember, I want you to keep in mind, I had no money, three kids to feed, rent was coming due, and I had to make money. So I remember my broker saying, well, there's this course, Create 21, which is like Accelerate now. And I remember we got three weeks through the course, and by this time, I remember my son, Corey, and if he was here right now, he would, he would be laughing because every time I tell this story, he, it just it brings back memories. And we got to three weeks into the course, and it was about for sale by owners, expireds, and I remember the instructor saying, okay, here's your homework. You need to call expireds and for sale by owners. Well, in the meantime, I'm like, I don't want to do this. I can't do this. I can't do this is what I told myself. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, my son's like, Mom, when is dinner? And I said, Corey, I said, there's a jar of pickles in the refrigerator. I said, we're waiting on money from in-laws so we can eat dinner. So he goes into the kitchen, and the only seriously, the only thing we had in the refrigerator was a jar of pickles. He pulls out the jar of pickles, and guess what happens? Drops it. They broke all over the floor. And for anybody that knows my son, he... He truly has diagnosed OCD, not just someone that says he has it. He would not touch them. I knew at that moment that, okay, I'm with Century 21. I've got my real estate license. The, the instructor told me to go call expireds and for sell by owners, and I said, okay, I'm going to do this. I go out into the garage. I remember sitting there, and I went through the expired list. This was Sunday morning. After the pickle incident, and I picked up the phone, and I called this expired listing. The guy answered. <laughs> I had no idea what to do. I just know the script said, told me what to say. So I said, hi, Mr. Seller. Um, I'm Jody Myers with Century 21 Premium Properties. I noticed your home is no longer on the market. And he paused, and he said, oh, no, our agent, our agent has it listed. I said, no, sir, as of 12.01 a.m. last night, your home is no longer on the market. So he put me on the phone with his wife, and his wife said, honey, I'm in the bathtub right now. I will call you back shortly, but our agent's having an open house today, and it is listed, I promise. I said, well, no, ma'am, it's not. So anyway, she said, well, honey, I appreciate you calling, but I'll call you back. Well, I, I was like, okay, well, that didn't go so well. Guess what happened? They called you back. Huh? <gasps> She called me back. She said, okay, I'm out of the bathtub now. I called my agent, and you're right. It expired. She forgot to renew the listing. And I was like. Which is a you. term agents these days are not familiar with having to do, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so anyway, she said, okay, I've got to get my thoughts together. I've got to get, I've got to get things together. I'll, I'll call you back. Well, the next morning, my phone rings at like 8.30. I'm jumping to the phone, jumping. And I run, and I'm like, hello, this is Jody." And she said, hi, Jody. This is 
the seller from Magnolia in, in Claremont. She goes, I want you to come list my home. You do? <laughs> I remember. I was like, oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Now what do I do? Now what do I do? <laughs> Kevin, I'm going to tell you, if I had let, I was a new agent. Every fear in the world, mm-hmm. under the sun, I had no confidence, didn't know what I was doing, no direction, because I, I was brand new. Mm-hmm. I had just started. I called my mother-in-law, who had moved down with us and lived about three doors down. I said, do you have something nice to wear? She's like, yeah, why? I said, because put it on, because you're going to be my assistant today, and we're going for a listing. (laughs) She said, what do you mean your assistant? I said, I don't know, but it sounds good. (laughs) (laughs) So so anyway, I had no idea how to fill out a listing agreement, no clue, but I told my broker she she couldn't go because she had already had a previous appointment. So she sent me one as an example. So... Here we are driving up to Magnolia Point in Claremont. I failed to look at the sales price on on the listing when it expired. It was a $700,000 listing. And in 2003, that's like a $1.4 million listing now. I I mean, it was crazy. So and I'm going to get to the point here, but this is why I tell this story. I pull up in a four-door 1997 Honda Accord with hubcaps. Okay? Hubcaps. Hubcaps. They have two brand new Escalades sitting in the driveway. A $700,000 house on the water. Little old me who's never worked a day in my life. I didn't have that kind of money. Oh, my gosh. How am I going to do this? I put on my, my mask, and I said, I am going to do this. I walked in, had no idea what I was doing, introduced my mother-in-law as my assistant and that she had been working with me for years. <coughs> three, three day, three hours. Well, I working wa- with you on other things. Just you didn't, you didn't say it real estate. You just no, said No, I just said working. Me. Yes, yeah. yes. So I walked out of there with that listing in hand. I want you to listen Go to girl. this carefully because this, this was life-changing for me. $700,000 listing. It had been listed with another agent who had been in the business for 25 years, and she had had the listing for over a year. I listed it at the same price, and it sold in three weeks. What do you think the difference was? You. Why me? You you got the the passion and the drive. Why the did other I, person, why you did, were hungry. You, the there other person, you go. There you go. You, you just said it. I had three kids to feed. I had no choice. They had to eat, and I had to sell the home. The homeowners were blown away that I had sold it in three weeks. And I will tell you, the biggest lesson I learned from that, and, and, you know, people call it a rags-to-riches story, is everything that you do in this business comes down to one thing. What do you think that is? Your ability to, to want to get up and do the work. Absolutely. It is your mindset. 121% your mindset. If I would have told myself that I can't do this, which I did, but I had to wipe that out because I had hungry kids, would I, have, I would not be where I am today. If, if, if I would not have totally changed my mindset and picked up that phone and just did it. Mm-hmm. But here's what I find. A lot of people want to make sure when they get into this business, they're so worried about not knowing what to do that they're afraid to do anything. And mm-hmm. that is the wrong mindset. I tell you, just get out there and do it. Create problems for me to solve. Exactly. You don't know how to fill the listing agreement? Go get me a listing. We'll help you fill exactly. the listing agreement. Exactly. And, and so and that was the whole – you cannot be worried about not doing something if you don't have a customer. Have the customer in hand and then worry about what to do. Well, I also, if you wait to learn everything you need to learn, you're never going to start something because you never stop learning this business. Exactly. You know, both of us have been doing this for several years and we're still, learn, still learning every single day. Mm-hmm. There's not a day that goes by that something doesn't come across my desk that I have not dealt with before or a situation I need to deal with that, you know, I have to learn about. Right. So, you know, and I think that's the biggest thing that I see when agents fail, especially during that first year, is they get stuck in that analysis paralysis syndrome. And it's, you know, north of 80%. 
I was just going to say, how many agents get into the business and don't make it? It's over 80%. It in is. The first year. It's about 83%. Now, listen to this. How many don't make it, or I should rephrase it this way, this, this way, is how many of the new agents will be still selling in five years? Very few. Very, very few. And why do you think that is? They don't have the staying power. It, it's, you know, they are not getting out there. They're not seeing the production because their mindset is, woe is me. It's the victim mentality instead of just getting out there and doing it. it exactly. So... The, and, and I, after I sold real estate, I sold real estate for about five years. I was rookie of the year my first year, which I, that still blows my mind to even say that to this, to this day, because I did not come from a real estate background. My dad was not a broker. My mom was not a broker. Nobody was feeding me leads. Nobody in my family was in real estate. And I'm telling you, if I, if I can do this with nothing and that's the big thing is no sphere, right? I it's had no sphere of influence here at in all. Central Florida, right? It's Central Florida is a a huge destination where a lot of people move to from somewhere. I mean, the mm -hmm. running joke is if you actually meet a true Floridian, you know, get their autograph, right? I, exactly. Um, that's the unicorn around here. So you have to build it. I didn't have a sphere here either. I mean, how many homes did you sell your first year? Do you think? Oh my gosh, I could. I don't even remember. I. I I didn't even keep up with it. It was just, it was crazy. And, and it wasn't because everybody says, oh, well, it was a different market then. If I hear that one more, one more time, I, it, it, it makes my head want to explode. Every Be year is a different market. It's did a constant evolving. It is. And, and did you know, this is, a, this is a cool fact. So, you know, everybody says, oh, no, you know, I don't want what happened again in, you know, in the great re uh, recession to, you know, happen next year or the year after. Oh my goodness, I'm going to be out of business. So do you know that there were only 1.5 million fewer homes sold during that time than I think 2019? Homes are always being sold. Homes are always being sold. But guess what? Why? The agents, they're not going out and getting the business. Right. They, they blame the market. There's always being homes sold. And that is what is so frustrating. You know who the biggest roadblock is in an agent's business? The agent. Themselves. Mm -hmm. Us. Ourselves. You said it the other day, you know, success comes when the power of your why exceeds the quantity of your excuses. You know, and that is absolutely true. So I, I hear everywhere I go, and, and it's probably one of my pet peeves is, oh, you've got to have a why. You've got to have a why. That's not true. You, you do have to have a why, but there's more to that. Your why has to completely outweigh your excuses. So, you know. Uh, in your case, here's a prime example. Yes, you had excuses. I can't do this. I don't want to do this. Yeah. But your why of, I have kids to feed. Mm -hmm. And if I don't get out there and do this, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to feed my kids. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with me. I quit my job without another job. And I was putting stuff on my credit. If I don't sell, I don't pay my bills. Exactly. Exactly. It wasn't an option you, did, you didn't have a plan B. No. Plan A had to work or you were done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that, 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 that fear is a huge motivator sometimes. Well, it is. Um, you know, it's funny you say fear. Um, you know, fear is, is really just, you know, forget everything and run. Just forget everything and just run and go get it. And that's truly what you have to do. But, you know, another thing, too, in coaching agents, after I um, – Huh, I didn't even tell you all this. The funny thing is, is we were so poor that we applied for food stamps and our kids' beds came from dumpsters. I'm, I'm telling you, you, anyone with the right attitude and the drive to work hard. Real estate business is the great equalizer. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter what your background is. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter what your skin color is, what mm -hmm. your religion is. Amen. What your citizenship is. Yep. None of that matters. It does not what matter. What your bank account is. The only thing that matters is your willingness to get off your ass and do the work. I mean, it work. is. It is. And and when, when we as entrepreneurs, and, and that's the thing is a lot of agents, they come into this business with a nine to five mentality and they're used to having I mean you know this firsthand is you were in the hotel industry and you had to go you knew what was expected of you you knew what you had to do and in this business people come in and they expect people to hold them accountable and tell them what to do and no that doesn't happen you literally have to have an entrepreneur mindset and you're going to have to make your you're, you're going to have to 
hold yourself accountable or Mm -hmm. tell or your agents can say Kevin hold me accountable Um, but people people are funny about but even as a broker you can have an accountability program like we do with 21 jumpstart but at the end of the day if they don't want to do the work they're not going to do the work right and that's the big challenge of coming from hospitality there are positions in the hotel industry where it is those hourly but once you get to management that nine to five is gone Mm -hmm. right you I mean you know, you have to be there when you have to be there. If that's an 80 hour mm-hmm. week or a 90 hour week or a 40 hour week, I've never had one of those, but yeah, you know, I haven't either. So, you know, coming into this, it was nothing new to me. Right. And that one thing for me that helped to me is I did not work from home and yeah, you can work from your house, but I actually, our brokerage had offices we could rent and I rented, there was two desks per office and I rented one that had two desks for s- available. I rented both desks. Oh, nice. So that way I could close the door and focus without distractions. And mm-hmm. I knew I was there every day. I literally generally opened the door. The first one in the building was the last one out the building, unless I had a showing. Mm-hmm. I was beating the broker there. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he even told me, I work, you work too much. I said, no, I don't. He's like, yes, you do. I said, no, my bank account tells me when, when I need to work and when I don't need to work. My savings account for my future, mm-hmm. that tells me when I need to work and not work. Exactly. Not the clock. Um, you know, and, and, and looking back and I was training a lot of agents. So after I sold real estate, I managed an office, ran the office and, you know, I can relate to broker owners, managers out there too, is, um, you know, I've, I've come up with several like personalities of top agents and I I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget because I truly feel that, it comes down to, I don't want to say personalities, but mindset. Um, I will tell you the biggest, the, the two the two top traits that I see that, that agents, top agents that are, I don't want to say successful, but hit their goals, mm-hmm. um, is you have to have an open mind. You absolutely have to o- have an open mind, and you have to be positive. And the reason I say that, is this job easy? I shouldn't say job, but is, is a real estate career easy? It's, it's simple. It's not easy. Exactly. It really is simple, but you're dealing, have you ever seen a 1000 piece puzzle? No. Have you ever put one together? No. Okay. I, well, let me it. I started one, but I did not have the patience. For well, it. there you go. And that's the thing. This, we are juggling buyers with, with personalities that I've got a story that it would blow your mind. I buyers, <laughs> sellers, Title companies, the other agent on the other side, lenders, you know, repairs, the personalities are crazy. So you're literally trying to put all these pieces together and get it to closing. And, you know, if you get, if you get an email that states, you know, oh no, this, this has come up, you have to be able to have that positive mindset, because you can do two things. Oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. Now this is never going to close. Or you can say what? Just get through it. Get through it, find a les- resolution, and get it done. And I'm I telling love it. you, bring me a problem to solve. I can exactly, solve exactly, <laughs> exactly. We're and part marriage counselor, part problem solver. Yes, but that's where I see a lot of agents get stuck. Is is they see these roadblocks, they see these problems as roadblocks, and then they stop. Every roadblock, trust me, any roadblock that you have, there's a way around it. Oh, yeah. You just have to find it. And I would have never, ever gotten to where I am today if I had had a negative mindset. I will tell you this. I had a lot of people tell me, you'll never make it in this business. Um, You know, you don't have a sphere of influence. You don't have the money. And people are going to tell you that. I had to get rid of all that negativity. That's the jealous people. It, it is. They don't want to see you successful. And I will tell you, I've had to cut several people out of my life over mm-hmm. the years. And I now surround myself with positive people. I want to, sur- I, I surround my, surround myself with people that are smarter than I am. Because that's. I do too. That's why you're here. Oh, I was going to say the same about <laughs> I you. I beat you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, something that I, I, and I thank you for letting me have my notes, but there's just some things I don't want to forget. Um, but, you know, I ran into an agent one time and we were talking about her success. And success does not come 
and I'm going to be very, some people may, may agree with this, may not agree with this, but, you know, success does not come from sleeping till 9 and 10 o'clock in the morning and then being done at 2 or 3 in the morning, nope. at 2 or 3 in the afternoon. I'm going to tell you that in all the top producers or all the agents that have met their goals over the year, I'm going to tell you they are up early. Mm-hmm. They focus on a prior a tasks which what are a tasks things that have to be done today things that are money making activities and and i think that's the biggest thing is learning how to prioritize your activities what are we most comfortable doing things we like things we like what do we not like to do in real estate well it depends on the person but the, I would, the average answer would be is is get out of our comfort zone and go meet people and talk to people Exactly. Exactly. But I'm going to tell you right now, I would not be sitting here today. If you not picked up the phone. If I did not pick up the phone and get out of my comfort zone. Yep. I, I it, it would not have happened. It would I, not have it, happened. You know, the, the formula to be successful in real estate, and here it is. I, you know, we'll, we'll break. You, know, you can cancel all the coaching, all the training out there. It's that simple. Mm-hmm. Go out there and meet people that you don't know today. Have conversations with them. Those conversations will lead to appointments, which will lead to contracts, which will lead to closings, which leads to success. Perfect. So it starts with having a conversation. It does. Everything else is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Go out there and have a conversation. Get with people. I I, we coach and there's twenty four, twenty five agents right now in our program and I meet with them every Monday or Tuesday. It's like how many conversations you had this week? And, and it I all can tell you, with the conversation. It all and, and the ones that are closing the most deals have the most conversations. It's not rocket science. It's not. This is you know, there's no secret sauce, so- and that's what everybody wants. What's the silver bullet? They hear about an agent that's been successful, and then the question is, you know, what what did they do? What was their secret sauce? The mm-hmm. secret sauce, I promise you, I could have never talked to that top producer. The secret sauce is they talk to people. Yeah, and it's funny you say that. So another thing, too, is I didn't have money to wrap my car like a lot of agents have. You know, they, they put their, you know, names on their I'm cars. scared to do that. Could I accidentally cut someone off to, like, leave a bad review online or something? Well, my mother-in-law was pulled over, and everybody was like, Jody, you got pulled over. <laughs> no, I wasn't driving. That was my mother-in-law. Um, but I will tell you, the biggest thing for me was I went to Home Depot, our office depot, and I put letters on the back of my car, sellers and buyers, called Jody Myers. and I like that. It rhymes. Yes. Yeah, and I did that myself, spent, like, I don't know, at two or three in the morning, and I was doing that. I wore my name tag everywhere. And I'm going to tell you this. Have you ever seen me without a polo shirt that has a company name on it? No, and I'm going to tell you, this is a true story. This is an absolute true story. So, And I won't, well, I don't know if I should say the name of the brand, but um, I did leave Century 21 for about six months. (gasps) Yeah. Well, what happens when you've been in the business for a year, year and a half, and you're doing really well? What happens? Oh, I want more of the money. And other brokerages call and recruit you. Oh yeah. And you think you're all that, which they're really cr- calling everybody. But hey, oh yeah, th- you're all you're all that in a bucket of chicken. Exactly. Yeah. And so I did go to another real estate company, and I remember I was going through the grocery store and I had my name tag on, and it was the brand of a of a company. And the lady stopped me, and she thought the brand of the company was my name. Long story. I ended up going back to Century Twenty One because. Every single time to this day, especially in Florida, everyone knows who Century 21 is. And I will tell you from all over the world, they always ask about real estate. And there's a reason why we're the most respected and the most recognized name in real estate for like, you know, two, over two mm-hmm. decades. Yeah, I, I you know my quick story. We, I was a Century 21 agent. I got to the point where I'm like, I can... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to 100%. So I went to this other office, and it was independent. We took our website. I actually was sharing the story with yesterday with somebody. And we literally, all we did was we changed the logo. We changed wherever it said Century 21 in that DBA. We changed it to the other company's name. Otherwise, it was the same. Our leads dropped in half. Our leads conversion cost, cost to convert doubled. Nothing else changed other than the consumer perception. Before they would land there, they saw Century 21, and then now they're seeing an independent. And I will say that will hold true 
even if you're going to like a Remax or a call, it's that global name that's been around forever. It Century is. 21 is the best, I think. It is. I think you would agree. It um, is. That's our well, home. we actually, um, Realogy, who is the parent company of Century 21, Coal Banker, ERA, yeah. Better Homes and Gardens, and the Corcoran Group. So this and Sotheby's. Is this, and Sotheby's, thank you. This is a fun fact, but um, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe we are ahead I want to say nine percent ahead in market share, and and than any other brand as of, and this has been probably the last six months. Yeah, we yeah, have more market share, and we're doing we're pacing faster than than the market and in our sales, and that just tells you the power of the of brand. a brand. I agree, yeah. and, but to go back to that story real quick, after a month and a half, um, I called my broker back and like, can I come back? I did too, and he's like, yeah, I'm like, well, will my well, my production count? towards my Centurion Award. And he goes, yes, we'll make sure that happens. And they, they called, actually, I think it may have, who was, may have been you. I'm not who, who adds. Uh, it might have been me. Yeah, and whoever it was got it done. And we, went, awesome. we went back. And again, reverse the cycle, right? Mm -hmm. Back to the Century 21 logo, replace the text, mm -hmm. change the colors. Just that, nothing else. Mm -hmm. The lead volume doubled. The cost went down by half. I mean, it just... Yeah, that just shows you the power of the name. It truly is. And I remember and, you know, back when I was, you know, applying for food stamps, getting bunk beds out of the out of the trash for my kids. And, um, you know, I did wear my name tag everywhere because Create 21, which is now Accelerate, they told me to. And the way I found my first buyer is an incredible story. And um, I walked into Chick-fil-A with my name tag on. And this couple by the name of Fred and Maria were sitting in the booth behind me. And I had my name tag on, just shorts and a T-shirt, but I had that Century 21 name tag. They were here from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And I sat down to eat, and they said, oh, I see you're in real estate. Well, nobody had told me what to say if somebody <laughs> asked me about that. So I was like, yeah, I'm with Century 21. And they said, well, how's the market? And I was like, what have you heard about the market? I had no idea. I was so new in the business. I had not studied the market. I had, didn't get familiar with the market. I, I remember calling my, my mother-in-law again, and I'm like, um, put on that suit because we're showing houses. <laughs> this was before, you know, you she could find. Like your lucky charm? Yes. Like your and, blankie. And, and, and exactly. Exactly. So we, I had no idea what I was doing. But if I would have let me not knowing what I was doing, I sold them a house the next day. Just for meeting them at Chick-fil-A. Oh, yeah. And. I want at Starbucks. <laughs> there you go. But but I'm telling you, if I would have let my mindset, I can't do this, I can't, I don't know what I'm doing, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you just, you naturally, as long as you build a relationship with someone, I mean, you'll learn as you go. And and obviously, you're there for your agents, and you help them. You're the, always there to answer questions, and, you know, everyone here is. Um, but, and I sold two houses to a couple from, um Peru, yeah. by my name tag. I did when I, my very first office was the Century Twenty One, and uh, it blew my mind. Before I could do anything, the requirement was I had to go sit in a contract class to fill out, how to fill out the contract. And I guess I was, you know, me. I have no filter on my face, so the the you the, have no filter. Period. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm visibly annoyed. And so the, the person, she was the office manager. She was, is something wrong, Kevin? I said, I just think this is stupid. I said, why are you teaching me step 99 when I don't know step one? By the time I learn one through 98, I'm going to forget what you told me today. Uh -huh. So how about this? We'll just call this done. I'm going to go out and try to figure out how to get exactly. a customer and exactly. sell a freaking house. And then when I have a need a contract, you just help me then. And that's exactly what I did when I was running an office, what you just said. Exactly. You know, another thing, too, that I really want to point out is, you know, Garbage in, garbage out. If you put garbage in your head, and I hear this a lot, um, nobody out there can buy. You know, my offer's not going to get accepted because there's 10 other offers. Um, you know, and I, I had written down some of the other things I've heard agents, you know, say is it's impossible for people to buy. No one is buying and selling. Um, or, or agent Susie's getting all the business. You know, I don't like it here. This brokerage isn't fair. You don't hear that. No, never. <laughs> and I'll tell you. The ones that say that and do leave, though, are they, without exception, have never improved their numbers elsewhere. Yeah, and usually I do see that. When an agent leaves um, a Century 21 office and goes to another company, you know, and they follow their production, it usually does. Well, there's two exceptions in our entire history. 
that's that's pretty incredible. But I'm telling you, wake up every morning. You have a choice when you get up every morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, you truly, truly do. And what you tell yourself, wake up, positive affirmations. There are buyers out there. My offer will get accepted. What you put in your mind is exactly what is going to happen. Have you happen. ever heard of the Pike's Place um, fish market? No. All right. So everyone Google this, the Pike's Place fish market in Seattle, Washington. Um, they have the fish philosophy. And so they, there's a video you can probably see it on YouTube. The fish market is in pods. And so the customers can walk all around. But the packing, if you buy a fish, it has to get to the place where they package it and check you out. The problem is, is there's no pathway. So there's only one way then to get the fish from where the fish is to the packing. And of course, the logical answer is to throw it through the air. So, yep, you'll hear, you know, all of a sudden, fish flying and flying, this, you know, whatever, mackerel, whatever, flying through the freaking air. That and is so hilarious. And so everybody, you get people in the area that just love to come and just watch the workers work. You have all these people from, you know, different, you know, corporate offices around that place. They come down, they get their coffee from one of the original Starbucks, and they go there and they just watch this. And then so they, you know, the workers have been there for years. I mean, clearly it's not them. I mean, it stinks. They're dealing with raw seafood. They're uh, throwing it everywhere. I can just smell that now. Yeah, right? Uh. And so they have the fish philosophy. There's four core principles, but the number one is choose your attitude. Every day you get to wake up and you have one choice that will set the, the rest of your day, and that is to choose your attitude. You can it's choose true. to be negative. You can choose to be positive. You can choose to be a jerk or you can choose to be not a jerk, right? And it goes back to what you say is every day we have that choice mm-hmm. and no one can take that choice away. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I will tell you, it's all about, you know, like you talked about earlier, um, you know, this business is all about meeting people. And if there's any new agents, which I know there are, but I will say this, the new agents that are coming into the business that don't have a sphere of influence, if you're sitting at home every day, don't expect the business to come to you. Go work at Starbucks. Go work somewhere. Go out somewhere. I literally, I, this is what I used to do because I remember I had no sphere of influence and we didn't have social media. We had no social media, so I couldn't even friend people. That long ago, huh? It was that long ago, and it was in the old days. Um, Did they have computers? I think we were just getting computers. We didn't even oh. have phones that that you could um, touch. Pe- people actually yeah. had to call each other. You had buttons. I think we did, but you couldn't even text and all that. It was crazy. Um, And you still survived. And I did. I I did. And and people say, oh, well, it was easier back then. Uh, (laughs) No, it wasn't because there was no social media. And so I literally would get in the car every day, and I was a moving billboard. Mm -hmm. I would stop in front of for sale signs in neighborhoods that weren't even mine, and I would literally get out with a pad and a piece of paper and I would act like that I was doing something for the house, and people would stop and ask me about the house <laughs> that we're driving through. I love that. Yeah. You know what else I would do? <laughs> I would literally, all the time, I would drive through new home communities with my... Um, billboard. Billboard, my moving billboard, and I would sit, and I would, every you know, few days I'd go back and sit in a different spot, and I would just you know, wait for people to ask me questions about new construction in the area. You know, I, I, I was so creative. I would literally go to Universal Studios or Disney, and guess what I'd be wearing? Name tag or polo shirt. I, I wear a t-shirt and go get, I love to talk, I, again, talking with someone just literally yesterday about this. I, I will, I used to go to the park. I've gotten sales from people in line at the parks. Mm-hmm. Or go and live stream on your page, like a ride, mm-hmm. and then people will comment all the time. But guess what? Here's the thing. People want easy. They want to make six figures, and they want it to be easy. I'm going to tell you right now, if you expect to come in and make six figures and it to be easy, you're in the wrong. You're, you're in the Couldn't wrong. Couldn't agree field. more. Yeah. Cause you actually have to. And, th- and that's the thing is, I, I use the analogy, if you are working for a company, and this week you decide, you know what, I don't want to go to work. I'm going to stay in my bed. And I'm going to eat Ben and Jerry's ice cream and watch Jerry Springer all day. Guess what? You're going to get fired in real estate. You're just not going to make money. Yeah, yeah. You got to wake up every day with the attitude that you're unemployed. 
Yep. And you don't know, you don't have How did your you next video that on, on, you, on our YouTube yes, channel. Yes, but yep. you do, you have to. Um, I mean, I could literally talk about this for hours and, and, and hours. Um, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is you just have to get out there and talk to people. And the one thing I see a lot of agents do is, is they don't tell people what they do. Yep. They're afraid. They're a secret agent, not yeah. a real estate agent. They're, they're afraid. And I'm going to tell you, no one is going to know what you do. And I have found this. People are very afraid to promote themselves. People feel uncomfortable promoting themselves. They feel get like it's, it. they feel like it's, oh, well, that's so, you know, cocky. And, and let me tell you, no one else is going to be out there promoting you but yourself. There's a book, and I, I'm blanking on the full title, but it's Pushy by Joe Magnum. Pushy's in the title. Do you remember the full title? It's, I, I will put it in the link. If uh, you're watching us on YouTube, I'll put it in the description below. I'll link to it on Amazon. It's a great book, and it talks about, you know, part of this is you. there's a way to get out there. There's a way to do this without being too pushy. And, and it's true. You're not, you know, when you promote yourself, and I'm part of the, if, if, for the ladies out there and even the gentlemen out there is, um, you know, there is a what moves her. I don't want to say movement because it's not a movement, but it is it's initiative for women, you know, women leaders. And, you know, you have to put yourself whether you're a man or a woman getting into this industry, you've just got to put yourself out there and. You've just got to be transparent. I mean, you yep. truly, truly do. And I, I could go on about this for hours, but you've got to get out of your own head because if you're stuck in your own head, you're going to be what holds yourself back. Yeah. Well, our time is, is winding down. So one final question for you before we, we head off into the sunset on this episode. If you had a new agent in front of you, and I'm sure there's plenty of them watching and listening, and you had to give them three nuggets they're brand new. They just got their license. What three things would you tell them? It's the most important three things that you can know. Oh my gosh, three things. I have to keep. I it know the list. Things. I know the list is. You know the very first thing that that I would say, and and I say this with wholeheartedness because I was completely. I had no one to tell me what to do when I first got started. So if, if I wished I had someone to tell me these three things, interview as many brokerages as you need to if it takes you two weeks three weeks a month interview every company out there out I mean you've got to ask the right questions make sure that there is a broker or manager in the office yes that picks up their phone and I think it's also important for new agents that there is an office that they can go to and speak with the broker, not a team lead, not someone that I you know, sponsored them. I absolutely agree. But a broke the broker who is the one that if they get into trouble, they need help, and it's a frack issue. It's the broker. It's not a team lead. It's not someone who sponsored them into the company. It's the broker. So make sure mm -hmm. that it is. You can go in and see the broker. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> because I found this, I'm only saying this because I know it's true for me, is that when you're interviewing, people will tell you what you want to hear. Exactly. And when you leave that office, email the person that you interviewed with. Text the person that you interviewed with. Call the person that you interviewed And see how long with, it takes to call them. And see how long it takes for them to respond. Because when you call them with a question on a contract or a buyer, you're going to get that same response. I'm going to tell you, do it. Because it will tell you exactly which company and which brokerage you need to go to. All right. So number one, interview. That was, that was number one. Um, number two, probably, oh, there's just so many. Um I would say if I had to pick one for number two, it would be training. I, I'm going to have to say it's training. Ask, you know, you've got to make sure that you're, that there's someone in the office or the company has training mm -hmm. because, you know, it's, I don't want to use an analogy. It's like riding a bike, but cause it's, it's, it's much more complex, but there's got to, you've got to have a real estate company 
that will show you exactly what to do in the first 30 days, first 60 days, mm -hmm. first 90 days. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm going to add this in there. Mm -hmm. Ask your broker, the one that you're interviewing with, mm -hmm. if they will help you create a business plan. Amen. And if they don't know how to help you create a business plan, run. But training is, is... Ask them for the template of the business plan. Uh, there you go. We have them printed. Yeah, it's, called, the, it's called Journey to Success. Well, exactly. And the reason I say that is because if you don't have a business plan, you're going to flounder. Mm -hmm. And you have to have a business plan. Um, number three, and, and this was really important, is not just the, the broker being available, but the culture in the office. Um, what do I mean by culture? Is it a culture of support? Is it a culture of where you want to be? Is there camaraderie? Or, because that is important, is it a culture of positivity? Is it a culture of production? Because I have been into offices where it was so negative, it will affect your, it will mm -hmm. affect your production. So is everyone in there, seriously, is it a positive environment? Is it an environment that makes you want to produce and sell real estate? Um, those are, I, I could go on and on, but those are my top three. All right. Well, some good tips. It's so awesome to be here and getting to see you. I know. D due to that uh, virus, which we won't mention the name because then we can't, you know, promote our podcast. Um, they don't allow you to mention the name. Yeah, I don't, I don't even it's, know what you're talking about. Uh, but due to that <laughs> thing that's been going on, you know, mm -hmm. it's, you know, definitely the face to face has decreased and, yeah. you know, it's great to kind of get it's back so to. It's so great to be here. Yeah. It truly is. You know, this is such a, and that's, you know, one of my concerns with some of the other companies that claim that, you know, brick and mortar is out. You don't need brick and mortar. Brick and mortar is absolutely not out. You know, it's not in. in if it there, was, there'd be no grocery stores and you could order everything I mean, online. But even real estate, right? It's, you know, having that, we're a people business. You need to be with people. You need to have that camaraderie. Um, I don't know of any brokerage other than one who's 100% cloud-based, but all the other brokerages I know of, mm -hmm. you can do everything in the cloud that you can do in the office. There is literally no reason that you need to come into our office. You can do everything online. You can come in because you want to. Our training, the same class is offered online as it is in person. You know, you can come but in. But I will tell you this is over the last year, year and a half, you know, everybody was like, oh, you know, I'm going to work from home, work from home. I'm going to work from home. I don't need brick and mortar. And then guess what happens after about six, seven, eight months? Everybody wants to. We're, we're everybody seeing. Everybody wants to go back to the office. I couldn't tell you. I was so glad to get back on an airplane and start traveling. Last night when I knew you had invited me to come here today, I couldn't sleep because I was so excited to get to an office. Yep. People I want mean, that. We, we they have, crave it. We have more, audio, more office participation in person than we even did before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Jody. thank you for joining us. Thank you, Kevin, if, for yeah, having me. Of course, anytime. You're welcome. If you're watching on YouTube, do us a great big favor and click on the subscribe button if you have not done so already. Click the like button if you enjoyed the video. And also do us a great big favor and click that bell so every time we post a new video, you will be alerted. If you're listening to us on your favorite podcast app, it would be a great big favor for us if you would do us a favor, click that five stars, leave a review. It helps the algorithm know that our content is helpful and puts it out into uh, more people. Our goal with this podcast, no matter where you're at in the world, we have listeners in almost every continent, actually. We're actually in the top 10 in South uh, South Africa right now. I know. Go figure. Who knew? Um, and we're, we're, there's another, I forget the name of the country. We're number one in Africa. Um, I forget the name of it now. Wow. I just blanked on it. But hey, whatever. Um you know, please do us a favor, leave that review. It really does help. We really want to help agents grow their business from wherever they're at now to that 121%. And you've grown tremendously. Your office has grown. It's we're, the agents are, our agents are incredible. It's my great honor. I say it all the time. People, I think I'm guessing, but I'm, I'm being sincere. The greatest honor of my career my, is, is working with these amazing agents that Your we have. Your servant leader. It's, it's my job. That's what I do. Yeah. Right? Otherwise, I go sell houses. Yeah. You know, brokers aren't brokers to make a lot more money. It's, you know, you're, you're called brokers because you're typically brokers than the agents. So <laughs> that's why. Um, <laughs> but so it, it, it's, it, it, you know, so. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, go out there every day, defy mediocrity, and whatever you do, make sure you're delivering those extraordinary experiences. Thank you so much for watching and for listening. Have a great day.